What's up, y'all? Welcome to Back in the Shop. I got this little moped here that I built several years ago, and today I'm going to go through and show y'all how to clean the carburetors on these old type motors and uh, really get in deep and try to get some close shots and uh, some recording. So there's a little guy right there, and I put gas in this the other day. I mean, granted, it's been sitting for probably three years. Put gas in it, and no gas flows down into the fuel line, which tells me the float inside is stuck shut. Uh, and I'm guessing there's probably plenty of other gunk inside that carburetor as well. So we're just going to kind of go through, take the carburetor off, go through it all, uh, use compressed air, whatever method we need to get that carburetor cleaned out. I'll show you how I do all of these uh, style carburetors. Uh, pretty much, much on any uh, mower, uh, tillers, weed eaters have a little bit different style carburetor, but you can use the same method to clean them out as well. All right, guys, I hope you all can see this okay. I got the camera on a tripod. It's not that easy to get it close up while I'm working, so hopefully you can see it as I pull this carburetor off, and then we'll try to get some close up and better uh, videoing once I get it off and I'll show you all how to go through it and get it all cleaned out and uh, what all different components need to be checked, cleaned, make sure that all the orifices and the jets and everything are cleaned out good and uh, we'll kind of go from there. So I'm gonna get this tore off here real quick. I got the carburetor off of this moped. All right, I got the carburetor off. As you can see, the outside's pretty grimy looking. We're just gonna try to clean off as much as we can. And uh, before we open it up, we don't wanna get any of that inside. And I generally use compressed air. Is, uh, I mean, if I had some extra cans of brake cleaner on hand, I could use that. Uh, maybe even some gas and a little brush. Toothbrushes work pretty good, but uh, I'm not that worried about it. I'm just gonna blow off the excess with my air blower here. Get all the excess loose stuff off. That way nothing falls inside when we tear it open. This particular carburetor has three major adjustment screws on it. This is your main or high speed jet adjustment. Uh, typically it'd be a turn and a quarter out from all the way in uh, to a turn and a half. Uh, that you really need to adjust when it's running to get uh, exact adjustment. You really want to just turn it in until at about half throttle it's running completely smooth and then you turn it out just a hair until it starts to crackle a little bit because under load it uses more fuel. Uh, low speed is yeah, uh, the same as the high speed, about turning a quarter from all the way in. Uh, so you tighten it all the way in until it feels snug and turn it back one turn and a quarter. And that's a good point to work off of. You want to set that so the RPM is the highest RPM when it's idling. And that's not that picky as far as where you set it, but if you set it too much, it'll just run a little rough at idle. Got the throttle flap, the choke flap, uh, and we're just gonna pull this float bowl off and work from there.
So on this carburetor, got that little hole. I don't know if you can see it right there. It goes in the center of this bolt and up or to the center and then up the center. And the screw adjusts how much fuel flows in that hole, which is at the bottom of the float wall up to the center. That goes up inside there through your main jet tube, which goes right up into the center of the carburetor. That's where the majority of your fuel comes up. The rest of it for the low speed fuel goes up this little hole right here and crosses over to this screw. And you got, I don't know if you can see them or not, there's two little holes right inside there on the side of the flap and that's where the fuel comes out to fuel it when the throttle flap is closed. And this screw here, to clarify, it doesn't adjust fuel, it adjusts airflow. The fuel is consistent. And you adjust the airflow so the fuel air is even. And that, you can't really see it, but there'll be a hole. Let's see here. There's a hole somewhere in here where it sucks the air in. Yeah, it's inside there. So as the air flows through the carburetor, this screw adjusts how much air goes into the air passage and then pushes the fuel into the, well, through the little hole into the intake. Try to not be too confusing. If you're working on these, you probably know just a little bit about them. So I won't go into too much depth on that. So the main, the main spot that needs to be cleaned is this hole and the jet where this uh, needle valve screws into. And I think, let me see here. Yeah, that's, that's free and open, so the float was just stuck shut. I don't hear any. Let me pull this pin out here. Turn out and pull the float off. There's your needle valve. That's the fuel inlet when it fills up the float bowl. Shuts the fuel off because the float goes up, pushes the needle valve up. One thing you do want to check is make sure there's no gas inside there. Just shake it a little bit. If you hear gas inside, there's a hole in it and you'll have to get a new one or a used one off of something else. But uh, that sounds good. I don't hear any fuel in it. This right here, we're gonna just screw this all the way out. Make sure you're, there's a little O-ring there that seals it when it's tightened up. O-ring looks okay. St still a little bit rubbery, surprisingly, for this age. So we'll just leave that. That hole through there is your main high-speed jet. What needs to be clear is the hole there that feeds it from the bottom of the float uh, bowl. And I don't see anything major in it. I think the majority of the problem was the float was just stuck up, but we're just gonna blow some compressed air through this. Just to kind of clear that out. Make sure there's no grime or dirt stuck in there. But uh, it all looks pretty good. This needle valve is not in the greatest shape. But since it's adjustable, we can adjust all that out once we get it running. I'm gonna just go all the way tight with it, which is right there. Let me grab a screwdriver here. I'll show you here all the way to snug, just barely snug it. You don't wanna put a ring on the needle and go one turn, one half a turn. And we can, it'll start and run at that and we can adjust the mixture after we get it running. Because the, really the only way to adjust the mixture properly is do it when it's running and go all by sound, RPM, torque, all those different good things. Just wipe this out, it doesn't look too bad. Just blow some compressed air through here. And then we get the smaller speed jet. You can even go in 
here and the little bitty holes and blow some air in there. Now I can blow through that, turn it upside down, and it's shut, so that means the float's working properly. Now normally, I'm one that's really gummed up. This really wasn't that bad, and the problem was just the float was stuck up. But on a normal one that's pretty grimed up, I would take a small guitar string and run it through all those holes, maybe even a very small drill bit if you have one that small, and I just spend a little bit, work it around, and just try to clean normally gets that, that white white uh, powdery looking stuff or tar type stuff gas deposits on all that's got to be cleaned out so it can flow freely and that's pretty much the gist of it they're pretty simple most of the modern ones do not have adjustment screws but they still have fixed jets that have to be cleaned so pretty same principle there and now let's put this back on see if we can get this thing started We don't have a pull rope to start it because normally I would roll to start it, but because I can't video that, uh, I'm gonna have to use this contraption right here. And uh, this is a uh, ratchet, ratcheting, uh, well, it's actually made by snap on for putting on a breaker bar to turn, turn it into a ratchet. So it'll work good for this. And, uh, I used to have a pull rope for this and I took it off because it stuck out too far and when you were pedaling it to get rolling so you could start it by rolling, uh, you'd hit your knee on it. And somewhere along the way I lost it, so I had no longer have it. Let's see here. Turn on the fuel so it shut off. And honestly I can't tell if it's filling up or not. Line's supposed to be clear but you can't see through it very well. But uh, let's see if we can get this thing started here.
After sitting for three years, or however long it's been, I think I need to put a little more oil in the gas. It's not really smoking at all. I like to see a little bit of smoke coming out of it. And as you can see, float bowl O-ring is leaking. So I'm gonna have to fix that up. But there you go. Three years of sitting, a few minutes of carb cleaning, and ready to roll again. Not to mention the tires is flat and uh, I got a sprocket and a couple bearings that are going out right here. But uh, we'll get those fixed up and I'll try to video that as well and show you all how we go through all that and methods I used. Well, there you go, guys. Got it running after sitting for three years. Not too much. It's a good running motor. It's always been that way. A little bit cold-blooded, but other than that, it runs great. And uh, there'll be more videos that I'm going to be put filming of this uh, moped here, getting it all running and roadworthy. And uh, I'll be putting them up. Like I said, every Friday, we're going to have a new video coming up. Probably not all of this. Uh probably going to do a little bit of a series of this and once in a while it's going to be when I have time to work on it like I said it's at my house so you know how that stuff goes work gets busy and all that but just stay tuned we'll have more videos coming see you next time